like the number of property owners in Thunder Bay experiencing pinhole leaks is increasing. Over 1,000 people have now joined a Facebook page discussing leaky pipes. It's the most accurate available figure of the number of people affected by the problem as the city of Thunder Bay isn't commenting on the issue. Bruce Carley owns eight rental properties near Lakehead University. He explained his concerns to the CBC's Jeff Walters. Fortunately, I've been able to do the uh, pinhole repairs on my own. Um, you know, so it's basically a cost of time and material. So maybe $50 to $100 per. I've had at least a dozen pinhole leaks. And like I say, the, the, last, the last large um, supply line that went was, was almost $10,000. And that and I was with a deal. You know, you said you own you know, a handful of homes in the university area. Um, you're not the only ones in, in that area being affected by this? Oh, no, no. There's everybody being affected. I know several other landlords, and they've been fixing pinhole leaks as well. Do you have any idea as to how many, uh, how many leaks you fixed between your five properties? Oh, actually, it's eight properties. I'm going to say, uh, let's say, let's say between 10 and 20. And now, I, I mean, now, because it's happening to more people, I don't know if this problem is escalating or, or just there's so many people that have been affected by it now over the recent months that they're becoming vocal. But uh, it feels to me like it's ramping up from, from talking to other landlords or... I do know one exact one uh, condominium owner who's actually got a full-time plumber fixing leaks. More information is coming to light about the extent of the pinhole leak problem in household copper pipes around Thunder Bay. Local plumbing companies say they have never received this many calls about pinhole leaks before. So far, the city insists they are not legally responsible to compensate homeowners for any out-of-pocket costs in relation to pinhole leaks. Hi, I'm Patsy Statnick. I've lived in Thunder Bay for a good 50 years. And um, yeah, I, I've loved living in Thunder Bay and it's been good to us. Um, but this, this summer has really thrown a, a loop at us. Um, we had a, a rental property. We had the same tenants for 23 years and they were going through a bit of a health issues and didn't realize their yard was flooding. When they called me, it was pretty much the backyard totally flooded and the sub pump had been running for a couple of days and not knowing really what was going on in Thunder Bay because it hadn't affected me. I had a couple of friends saying, you know, we've got leaky pipes. All of a sudden the pipes are leaking and uh, it didn't really affect me. I thought, well, it's an isolated problem. Out of all the rentals I have, I've probably had maybe 12, 15 leaks that I've had to repair. And then most recently, I just had a made, uh, major repair with the service line. Basically, what has happened is the city of Thunder Bay has added sodium hydroxide to the water supply. What has happened from that is it's been determined that most of these, most people who have copper pipes in their houses and not the lead pipes, which is what the, the treatment was for, are now receiving pinhole leaks from the sodium hydroxide clumping together and basically just almost as an acid melting uh, small pinholes which is now becoming more and more apparent in more and more situations and it's starting to really basically take over all the homes in Thunder Bay. Here is, is 213 Perth Crescent. There's been 10 other people on our street that have, have had uh, pinhole leaks. They've also had um, Two or three have had to replace the uh, water line from the curb all the way up uh, to their house. So this here was the, uh, the first piece of pipe. This was back January 16th. I actually thought the hot water tank was, uh, was leaking. Um, it was spraying directly on to uh, the hot water tank. So you can see I, I removed the drywall to make it easy for the, uh, the plumbers. Uh, this is the main line going from the furnace room right across to the outside of the house and then up to the kitchen. But you can see uh, in here this something was leaking in here for a period of time. You got black mold. This will all have to be ripped out. Insurance company hasn't been too um, helpful. 
Then I, uh, I had to call the city right away and have the water turned off. The city worker came and uh, shut the water off and told me that, um, yeah, you've got a broken uh, service line. I can't really say too much about it because it's happening through the city and we have a gag order, we can't talk about it. And I says, well, what am I gonna do? I, I didn't really know what to do. And uh, he says, well, if you go on social media, there's a lot of talk about it. There is no calls. They, the people, I think, have got completely given up on contacting the city because they're of absolutely no help whatsoever. Not only are they of no help, they, they, you know, they don't take, they take their time to actually get to, to your problem. I know when I had my main supply line go on me, I, my tenants had called me and I got to the house right away and we were mopping the floor to mitigate those damages so we didn't have to pursue a, uh, an insurance claim, which I found out I wasn't covered for anyway. Now, I mean, I, I understand again, you know, the city is, is trying to hold back any liability or, or showing any liability here but you know they know what's going on and it's no secret that there is an inevitable lawsuit coming their way uh, I think now the longer that they stay silent is going to be m even more detrimental to their to their defense they won't cover the cost of uh, the pipes but they'll fix the water damage so the estimate on the water damage was 1800 bucks my deductible is 2000 <laughs> so yeah and the 7065 for replacing everything um, is out of my pocket right now uh, they need to, uh, you know, come up with an emergency crew 24-7 period, maybe one in the so north, one in the south to, to, you know, at least get to these people's houses. There's several people who don't know what to do. They don't know who to call. Uh, I had a friend on Facebook post that their great uncle in his, well into his 80s, still living at home, walked down into his basement and his basement was flooded. He had no idea. Who do I call? What do I do? Not only that, I mean, if you were to go in and want to want to be proactive and replace all the copper lines, I think it's going to be a tough time to find a plumber to do all this for you right now. So you've got to wait months with uh, even more potential liability of your pipes leaking. And you can't just go and cut out all your pop copper on your own because you have to go to the city and you have to have a permit and you have to have inspections. And, and I'm sure that's overwhelming. So there is a lot of questions that need to be answered. And, uh, and I think the city's got to end their silence and, and come forward now. Another thing that really bothered me was, you know, I'm obviously you're stressed when this is going on, your house is flooding, there's a, you know, your tenants are, are put um, in an awkward position. And then the city is charging me to turn my water off as their water's flooding my house. And then they told me that, you know, when I have it turned on, I'll also be charged again to have the water turned on. And I just thought, you know, what is this in this day and age? Is there no, no compassion? I, they're not talking to us about it. They wouldn't give me information, you know, but yet they'll charge me to turn the water on and off. After that, I reached out every way I could. I telephoned, I emailed, I called, I picketed or <laughs> rallied, you know, and there has just been no response. Um, I, I just, it blows my mind that, um, this problem is not affecting just me, but hundreds of people in Thunder Bay, hundreds of people. And, and older, you know, seniors, I had one lady at church that came up to me and said, oh, I've got no water, I've got no help. She's a widow, you know, she's well in her 80s. Where, where do these people turn? And there's, there's people that aren't well, that are dealing with this. It's, it's just grown to be right, it's out of hand and, uh, the city should take responsibility for this. We're the constituents, you know, they were voted in. Their first priority should have been to the people of Thunder Bay. Okay, so then um, if this issue is to happen in the middle of January and you're called and you have to dig up a line when the ground is frozen, what is the process? Can you explain sort of how that works? Well, you're going to have to bring a frost hammer in there, break all the frost, remove all the frost. Um, you're going to have to bring a new material again. Your time and labor is going to be doubled in. 
In the average, we can maybe get it between eight to 10 hours in a day we get it done. We're losing light. If you have to start, it'd be a two day process. You probably would break frost first the first day, remove all the stuff and then tackle it the next day and try to correspond with everybody else on that date, which is gonna be difficult because you with the plumbing inspectors and everything else the frustrating part has to be for the homeowner is that first when you show up there they're already you know what i mean they have no water they're on edge as it is right they might have some illnesses and everything else and then they call their insurance companies and it seems like the insurance companies some are good some aren't so good and it, it just compounds the stress onto the homeowner whether they're covered or not, where they want to know exactly where the leak is or not. Some are covered on the outside, some aren't. Some are covered on the inside only, right? Which causes more stress on the homeowner than the insurance companies are calling. You know what I mean? Me trying to ask, well, I can't see through concrete. I can't pinpoint where a hole is in the ground. I can't look through six feet of dirt and tell you where, where the hole is, right? Um, so they're getting frustrated too if they're having coverage or they don't have coverage. On, on a typical month, Right now, I'm responding to at least 25 uh, houses. That's where it seems to be peaking. It still is peaking right now. I don't, have, I don't think we've seen a decline yet of this, so I don't know how long this is going to go. So far, uh, the city has had absolutely no advice, no help, no, they have been completely silent. Basically, I think you're looking at about a minimum of $7,000 to have somebody come and actually dig your house up. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying, well, that doesn't include the plumbing inside of my house. And no, it does not. So I've heard uh, again on the Facebook group uh, that that number runs between three and $5,000, depending on how complex the plumbing is in your house, uh, how it buries behind your walls. In my main house, I have plumbing in my core floor, cement with heated floor lines. So if I endure a, 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 a leak in my pipes, I'm gonna be forced to jackhammer out my entire floor to replace it or run piping through, through you know, external piping throughout the interior of my house. Uh, either one is gonna be, is going to, you know, be tens of thousands of dollars, period. There's no, there'll be no avoiding that. If this happens to a typical individual, what they would be looking to do is number one, uh, the biggest expense, of course, would be replacing your main service line. To get inside of your house, you're looking at hiring a plumber to come in and basically rip out all of your copper. Then when you're done with the plumber, you're gonna have to hire somebody to come back in and do all your drywall, your taping, your painting. I mean, this could typically to bring a house up uh, to where it should be pre-sodium uh, hydroxide, could run you from from twenty to to fifty thousand dollars. I mean, that could be every potentially that could happen any home in Thunder Bay. So we started the protesting as a result of not hearing anything from the city and not getting any feedback. The media was excellent. They covered it before, during, and after. So we had lots of coverage. Uh, a lot of people aren't on Facebook, so with the media's help and that, they were aware of the protest or rally. It was such a big decision to make putting this into our water and they you know they hire consultants to put lines you know on the street or you know for so many trivial things money is spent on consultants if they hire a consultant for something this big no you know it it was it was very disheartening um did they take a plebiscite did they ask any of us but yet we're all suffering the consequences of this and it's um it's not right and they're not listening to us you don't want to get me to cry here, <laughs> but you know, it's, it is so disheartening. You know, I find it comical that uh, the city council, they meet and they're talking about raising our property taxes two to 3%. Well, we're actually all getting hit with about a 200% tax bill here because, or, or, or greater. I mean, this is, the numbers are, are astronomical. To add more insult to injury, you know, I, uh, listening to the news this week, city council were, were able to, to uh, close down at nine o'clock p.m. on Monday night. 
we have we're in the middle of a pan pandemic and we're also in the middle of probably the biggest infrastructure breakdown our city has ever seen and they're done on their way home at nine o'clock um you know i i remember only a few years ago when they they had sessions that ran until one or two in the morning talking about whether or not the residents can have chickens in their backyard so how how does that take a priority over our basic infrastructure water supply and again just to take it one step further it's not like this is something new What's going on in Thunder Bay clearly has everyone's attention. In a few short weeks, I have talked to over 100 homeowners and heard the exact same story. There is a growing number of people in the city who are out thousands, sometimes even tens of thousands of dollars due to these leaks. The damage is real, the waits without water are long, and the frustration has clearly struck a nerve in our community. These problems have been going on for far too long, and it is time that the people of Thunder Bay finally get some clarity and answer from city officials. During these uncertain times, everyone in our community is vulnerable. The people affected by these leaks are not chemists. We are not experts on the refinement of drinking water. We simply put faith in our municipal government to provide this service to us, and we are seeking answers when those leaders go silent. How many more homes need to be destroyed? How many more trenches need to be dug? And what dollar amount needs to be spent by the people of Thunder Bay before the city addresses this ongoing situation? These issues have affected everyone from homeowners to small businesses and local charities. It's time for answers, and it's time for the silence to finally be broken.